always love to hear from you. Send us your views, comments, and videos with your name and town to the One Africa TV's WhatsApp on 081-200-6659 or send an SMS to 555. One Africa TV. It just gets better. busy with an economics lesson from the NSSC syllabus of Namibia and we are busy with 2.1 on the syllabus and we still discuss the business types. Um, we do the last part of private sector firms. We will cover multinationals and we will also look at informal firms uh, which I also believe is part of this because it is a private person that start up this informal firm, but you can decide. So multinationals and informal firms, and then we will look at one public sector firm, and that will be the, uh, the nationalized industries or the parastatals as we call them. Okay, um, remember I've said it's always good to recall information from the previous lesson. Now here is a question, like I've said, Give me three differences between a private limited company and a public limited company that we have just, or that we have covered in the previous lesson. Look for differences between them. They, they like to ask that type of question. Okay, um, so before I continue, I have now the slide on where you see all the business types. So please look at the amount of times I use public. What public did I use so far? I've used public sector, so there I use public. Then I use public limited companies, which is not part of the public sector, which is a private sector firm. And then I will use as an example of a public sector firm, a public corporation. So you see three times they are public. So the word public is used. Please don't get confused. Students often get confused. And then if I use public limited companies, then they think it's, it's part of this. But remember companies is private sector firms. So don't get confused, please. Um, it is very important. On the slides you will see I've, I've highlighted them all in yellow, that you can see the public appear often. Okay, the features of a multinational. Multinationals is normally uh, public limited companies because multinationals is very big. They need lots of capital and that's the only time they can get the only way they can get so much capital together is by selling shares on stock exchanges. Um, if I tell you uh, what a multinational is, you will understand why I said they need lots of capital. They are operating all over the world in different countries. Their headquarters is normally in a developed country. Don't have to be, but it is normally. Um, like in our case, where you have a multinational like Namibia Breweries, which operate in different countries, there is headquarters in Namibia, and Namibia is a developing country. That's why I said normally. But if you look at a product like Coca-Cola, the headquarters is in America, and they have branches all over the world. So that is a good example of a multinational. Uh, why do they operate in different countries? Uh, they look for new clients, new demands, new markets. Um, that, uh, if they start in other countries, it reduces their transport costs. 
because you don't have to transport the Coca-Cola um, products that they produce in boxes from America to Namibia. They produce it here and they perhaps send the raw materials and so forth if we can't get it here. Or, so that is uh, cheaper to distribute it to the clients. They can save on the cost. Um, they look for favorable conditions to produce in, where it is, for example, safe, close to raw materials, cheap labor, that type of thing they are looking for if they produce in other countries. It's not only to look for a market. It's obviously that is part of it. Uh, they are, they like to start up in developing countries because they can get all these benefits like cheap labor when they start up their factories and businesses in developing countries. Um, but the benefits that be developing countries get from them is that they train their workers and they teach them how to produce this type of product. So they share their know-how with the developing countries. Okay, um, we have looked at the, um, the benefits developing countries uh, get from multinationals, or we have looked at a few. There's uh, and we have looked at disadvantages that they, um, to attract them, um, the government normally will offer tax reductions to them or other forms of rebates. If you train our workers, we will give you a, a rebate or we will give you grants to do so. Um, Pro, a negative point is that profits are normally, after they pay tax, they take the profits back to their headquarters. So that is not so good. It is mostly not invest back into the country. Uh, it increased the output of our country a lot because it is pro products produced in our country. So it will increase our GDP. We will later on talk about what GDP is. Okay, disadvantages of a multinational you can pick up now. You can see they, you can bring in products which they dump in our countries because they can't sell it in their own country uh, because there is an oversupply, say, of butter in the Netherlands. Now they come and sell it here. Or tin fruit in France and they can come and sell it here in the developing countries. So they dump low uh, quality products sometimes in developing countries. And then um, they don't regard laws of the country always where it comes to the environment and the resources. So they will, um, they will say, for example, misuse our resources or damage our environment. And if the country, uh, the government then talk to them about it and say it's not according to our country's laws, they will say, but then we will leave. And uh, that will mean that 3,000 workers will be out of the job. So you see they have a little bit of control over the government. Okay, and then... Um, they operate in more than one country, so they can spread the risk. If they see that in this country you pay more tax on this specific uh, part of the production process, then they move it to another country. Or um, we get too much trouble with this from the government, then they move it to another country. So th that is to their benefit, but not always to our country's benefit because uh, we may uh, rely on their income and then they decide to do that. They exploit our cheap labor. That is a negative point. And they also normally don't apply to minimum wages in the country. And uh, we have examples of Ramatex that have moved after the country had more um, that have put a lot of pressure on them to pay their workers more than the, or at least the minimum wage. And there was a lot of workers without a job. 
The last negative point is uh, that they take their profits after paying tax. Some of the multinationals like Rossin Uranium have developed, say, the school in the a schools in the area, the health services in the area, some roads and so forth. So some companies do put money back into the um, country. Here we have uh, examples of homework. They advise, advise on the advantages of multinationals to a country, not only to the government, but also to the business itself and to the citizens in the country. So you can see if you are part of a multinational or staying close to it, you can use their clinics. And that will be, for example, an advantage explain what a multinational is about. And they, on that, they can test you five points that you tell them what a multinational is. Okay, and we look at a public corporation. Remember, that is an example of a public sector firm. They also call them parastatals or nationalized industries. The owner wholly or partly is the government. The government appoint a board of directors. Their aim is to Im not to make profits, to improve the welfare of everyone in the country. And they do it by providing services mostly, like married goods and public goods, which we will also cover later on. Then um, there's lots of examples that you can offer on public sector firms like NAM Power, for example. That provide electricity. Then the last one we do that I have said to you is informal firms. This is the person sitting on the corner and selling fat cakes or the person walking in the street or sitting on a corner and selling um, a newspaper, for example, newspapers or selling fruit to other people or selling wooden art. This is his own business, but why he is part of the informal firm is because he is registered nowhere. The Ministry of Trade and Industry don't know about him. He is not registered and that means he also don't pay tax. This type of business form is very, uh, or exists a lot in countries like our country where the unemployment rate is very high because that's the only way of earning the income. Okay, we have examples. Give three examples of an informal firm. Give three examples of a multinational in our country or three examples of public corporation. That for each of them, you can um, ask three points and then look at the disadvantages if a firm becomes so big that they lost control actually and look at that if you can come up with answers of why it is to a disadvantage if a firm become too big. Okay, um, there I have exam and test questions. Why will a business decide to change from a close corporation to a public limited company? Why will they do that? And you can look for six points if you can get that together. And then the second question is, discuss why multinational firms is mostly public limited companies, as I've said. If a reason for that, you can look for four points there. And why do you think it is the benefit, to the benefit of Bank Vintuk to change from a private limited company into a public limited company, which they have done a few years ago. Do you have a good claims history with the previous insurance history of at least two years?
Are you a single financially independent woman or over the age of 55 but not a pensioner yet? Are you a professional? If yes, SMS cover to 555 and we will call you back to get you insured for less. Enjoy these fantastic mid-month savings only at Clicks until 19 August. Buy Pampers Baby Dry Disposable Nappies Jumbo Pack, now $225.99 per pack. Buy Dove Deodorant for Men or Women, 150 mils, two for $51. And buy Nivea Lotions or Creams, 400 mils, two for $75. Or buy Protex Soap, 150 grams, three for $29. Clicks, feel good, pay less. At Spa, we're giving thousands of customers 50% off their shopping instantly. Simply buy any participating product and swipe your Spa Rewards card at the till to enter. And you could get half your shopping for free. Plus, get great deals like sunlight hand washing powder for just $41.99 and Nivea Roll-On Deodorant for only $15.99. Spa, here for the savings, here for you. Today we start with an uh, economic lesson from the NSSC syllabus of Namibia. We are at 2.2 and we will discuss trade unions. Okay, uh, we, will look at, uh, we will define a trade union, we will identify the aims of trade unions and describe the advantage of why one must belong to a trade union. Um, the question that I have for you is that you must um, remember that we had work with business types in the past. Uh, so this will come up now often and you must remember um, to, if we work with a public limited company that you understand what we are talking about. So what you can do before you, uh, there will be three lessons on trade unions, but before you start with that, you can ask all your students to bring an uh, article from the newspaper, which is on trade unions, and then you can let them identify the trade union, the problem that the workers have, and how the trade union try to solve this problem. And then they can come and present it in the class and you can give them in total 10 marks. The reason why I do this is that the others can learn from other, uh, each from their friends are about um, trade unions and where they are involved and why they are involved. You can bring examples from Namibia and of any neighboring country that will broaden the student's knowledge. Okay, if we look at the definition of trade unions. Trade unions is an organization. The issue one point that represent their members in negotiations with the management. So there will be negotiations between the trade union, which act on behalf of their members, and between the management or the owners. Three marks normally on that. What is the aims of a trade union? Uh, what I want to advise you is come up with different aims. Not all your aims is about wages, for example, and the benefits you get out of the firm. Uh, they protect you against unfair dismissals. Uh, according to labor law, they make sure that their workers is compensated for injuries at work. And um, they have lawyers that can protect their members against and make sure they are treated according to the labor law. And then um, they make sure that the members receive market related salaries and they try for good French benefits. Okay, then they advise and encourage the government to act democratically and in all the decisions and laws that they set, which involve labor. 
Okay, then we look at why it is an advantage to belong to a trade union. Why will you pay money every month to be, me be a member of a trade union? Firstly, trade unions protect you. Uh, they have the knowledge of the law, so they protect you uh, according to that. You can benefit from, um, uh, they provide counseling to HIV workers. They provide loans with low interest rate to their members. Sometimes they will, uh, as I've said, protect you against unfair dismissal, or they will set up training courses that you can train for something else if you lost your job. They uh, will try to get you better safe and health working conditions. Um, as I also have said, they will make sure and work for it that you get compensated for injuries at work. And they will try to get better fringe benefits for you where it comes to housing allowance, medical allowance, and so forth. Um, you remember this housing allowance and medical allowance is not a must. Uh, uh, you don't, you can't really force a business to pay you that. So that's why they can continue bargaining for that. Wage negotiations is something that continuously go on. So they will try to give you that market related salaries on the basis that you produce, say for example, more productive, that you bring down the cost of the firm, that you increase profit, that type of arguments which they will offer why they think their members must get a better salary. The last point we will look at is the role of trade unions in the rights of their members. They act on behalf of the interests of their members, in the interests of their members, and they're making the workers aware of the new laws, which is applicable to them. They encourage the government to strive to democracy for everyone, to treat everyone the same if they set the laws. They um, inform workers about HIV, how to prevent it, how to, if you are infected, how to use uh, um, still being able to work in the business and still being able to earn a salary. Um, then lastly, um, they help the government to develop labor laws and a very important aim in our government is to protect the human rights. Okay, homework is the aims of trade unions for six points and in what conditions, under what conditions can a trade union fight for the members for better wages? And then example uh, examples of exam or test questions discuss the benefit of a worker to become a member of a trade union. And that is six points. And describe the role in Namibia, why it is important that they are trade unions.
Kiri. Water.